or throw you, okay? That, um... Uh, I told Eddie I'd record it for him since he's out today. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, and those if we can um, identify it, right? Then hopefully that makes it a little easier to know what to do to to fix it. And I'm gonna give you some more tools today. I don't know. Can I review? I don't understand the basics of projectile motion, to be honest. Hmm. I don't get the basics at all, unfortunately. The basics. Not yet. Not yet. Um, yeah, we're not going to be able to go over the test in gory detail because there are still people some taking it yeah. in different sections and makeup <laughs> tests and things like that. But eventually, eventually there will be a key. Yes.
appreciate you helping me with the understanding what I need to focus on. Sure, sure. The last um, tutor meeting uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, actually it was uh, beneficial um, when Gabriel did chat with me that it is a good idea when we ha I hand your test back, if you can kind of go through and say, okay, ah, oh, is there a pattern here? In other words, am I missing all the questions on projectiles? You know, am I missing all the questions, which weren't that many, on two-body problems? In other words, if you can kind of identify where it is that you think you need more practice, uh, that can certainly help you going forward, okay? All right, but yes, as requested, uh, I don't have a key up yet, but I will before the end of the week, uh, because the, again, we've got lots of sections of this class and different people are taking different versions of the test, uh, so we want to kind of keep it all uh, fair uh, for everybody so we won't post anything uh, as yet, okay? So that would be my recommendation as you get your test back, just kind of go through them. And even if you want to sit down again with more blank paper and say, hmm, based on the comments that the teacher wrote, can I rework this problem, okay? And then just kind of see how far you get uh, with it, okay? Uh, but overall, and I don't know if I turned the button on where you can see the class average. I don't know if students seem to think that's important. Uh, but um, I mean, I, I kind of glance at it. I don't really take uh, a lot of stock in it. But I think I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, I don't know if I turned that button on where students like to see the class average. Uh, class average, write it as 70. Class average was a 70. So yes, you made a beautiful bell curve uh, out of that. Um, so, but, uh, but again, Please don't let a single test score make a big difference in what you're going to do for the rest of the semester, okay? Uh, that, uh, that sure, if you say, well, okay, this isn't the test score that I prefer, perhaps I should have spent more time, you know, invested in, in doing the practice, okay? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and again, you know, like you said, you've been professional students now for a long time, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you snuck in over there. Uh, that that you kind of hopefully know how your coping skills and how you're navigating your courses and time spent um, and that sort of thing. So, but uh, but again, I'll try to comfort you to say that this is a course that builds concepts. Okay, so you're still going to be doing kinematics for a while. You're still going to be doing uh, these free body diagrams, hopefully forever. All right, uh, because especially if you are going to go into any engineering. That, uh, that deals with forces in any way, uh, then these are kind of vital uh, to do that. Okay, all right, but yes, we are still in chapter five. Hopefully we're kind of keeping the pace pretty good here for you uh, so that we can nail these concepts. All right, so we're just gonna continue with that today. And then hopefully, that, yeah, we'll do a lab at the end of the week as we usually do. Right, and I'm going to give you some tools here today that will hopefully make this uh, job just a little bit easier. Okay, so let's see which one do I like here. I forget which one I like here. Okay, all right, let's just start with this uh, basic one. If you haven't watched these uh, videos yet, these are... Um, These are little uh, short things that uh, that you can take advantage of, um, and if, and again, if you find any sources online or different places, uh, please share them. You say, "Oh, I found this site. It's really great. It really helps me visualize what's going on." Please share. I'll be happy to to post uh, there. Oh, and that was the other thing. Hopefully, I sent you an email uh, over the weekend that uh, that also at this point in the semester. Uh, if you want to take advantage of that uh, collaboration place on Blackboard, uh, to just kind of share what do you think you have learned so far, okay? And again, regardless of what your test score is, is there anything out of chapters one through four that has stuck with you uh, that you know, yeah, I really nailed this? And please share with your colleagues what strategies you've used to say, yeah, this really helped me, okay? Uh, this really helped me and, and, and it makes sense and, uh, and so we can kind of help each other as we go. Okay, all right, let's uh, take a quick look at this. This is fairly short. This is a bungee jumper at the bottom of his trajectory. 
This is a pack of dogs pulling a sled. And this is a golf ball about to be struck. All of these scenarios can be represented by free body diagrams. Physical problems, for example, calculating the force on the bungee jumper by the bungee cord, are much easier to solve once you've drawn a complete and correct free body diagram. This video is part of the Representations video series. Information can be represented in words, through mathematical symbols, graphically, or in 3D models. Representations are used to develop a deeper and more flexible understanding of objects, systems, and processes. Hello, my name is John Belcher. I'm a professor in the physics department at MIT, and today I'll be talking with you about free body diagrams. Physics uses many different representations to aid with problem solving. Free body diagrams allow us to represent the forces on an object, thus enhancing our understanding of situations and helping us to solve problems. We're going to assume that you have drawn a few free body diagrams in the past, so this video will start with only a short refresher of how to draw them before getting into some more difficult and detailed problems. Our objectives are to improve your skill with free body diagrams and to show some of the connections between them and the physical situations they represent. Here are some guidelines to remember when drawing your free body diagram. Rather than trying to sketch an object in detail, we're always going to draw it as a single point. We focus on a single moment in time. Our diagram will only include forces and not any other vectors or any other quantity. The arrows we draw for the forces will be longer for stronger forces and we'll always draw them as coming from the object. Finally, we'll want to draw only forces with a substantial impact on the object's behavior and leave out any that are negligible. Let's do a quick refresher on how to draw free body diagrams. We'll walk through them one step at a time. If you have some paper available, you should draw the diagrams yourself as we go through the steps. This is a very basic example of falling block. If we ignore air resistance, this is an object with just one force applied, the force of gravity. We're going to draw the object as a point, draw the force of gravity as an arrow, and label our force. We're done. Let's build up to a more complex example. Here's the block on a table, stationary. We need to draw the object as a point and draw the force of gravity pulling down on it. Our block is stationary, which means that it is not accelerating. No acceleration means a total force of zero, so we must have at least one more force in place to cancel out the force of gravity. In this case, that cancellation is provided by the normal force from the table. If we wanted to have a hand pushing the object... Okay, yeah, let's pause it there. Yes? Excuse me. Um, I want to study, like, a, a long time. I watch a video. Can I watch a video? Oh, and I can watch video at home as well. Sure, sure. Okay, but I, again, as I just want to demonstrate a one or two here, that I just want to make sure that we're hitting the highlights. Okay, so sure. Yeah, so no, I'm not going to keep keep doing this uh, the whole time. Keep doing what? Yes. We can adjust our existing diagram to include that. All we need to do is add an arrow to indicate the force provided by the hand. We can also tilt the table upwards and push the box up the slope. As you can see, this tilt changes the direction of our normal force, but not the force of gravity. Okay, all right, now, tilting situations are hopefully gonna be your friend, all right? Uh, once you do a few of them, they all start looking alike, okay? So hopefully we can pick out the patterns uh, that we are gonna need there, okay? Now, what I would probably add to this gentleman's presentation here is when he's drawing these free body diagrams, it would be nice to see an X, Y axis. All right, so that we eventually can break things down into components and so forth, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna suggest here, especially for the tilted case, all right? So anything that is on an incline, okay? Anything that's on an incline, the best approach is to tilt the X, Y axis, okay? And it's really just gonna make your lives easier because your components are gonna be fewer Right, then leaving it uh, kind of straight up and down. Okay, all right, so let me just pick up the forces that uh, he's suggesting here, all right? Then this means that what? Fg, okay, still has to hang toward the center of the earth, 
Okay, so that one has to go there. Hopefully, if the x-axis now represents the table, that's my x-axis. So we defined the normal force, which now I've decided to take a little different notation, just calling it the n, right? Has to be perpendicular to the surface. So if the x-axis is the surface, perpendicular to the surface is the n. And then they're suggesting there is the force of a hand here. Okay, force of the hand uh, is pushing it. Okay, but now, if I'm going to look at this, uh, which force are you going to probably think of breaking down into components? The, gravity. the gravitational force. Okay, that's the only one kind of hanging in a quadrant, right? Uh, for, for the third quadrant here, all right? Okay, but now I've got to decide, well, where's going to be my reference angle? All right? Okay, when this thing was sitting flat on the table, all right, when this thing was sitting just flat, uh, then yeah, your typical x, y axis uh, would have been just, just a routine, all right? And yes, if I put F, G here and N here, that was not too exciting, all right? Now, if I do start tilting this, so here's what I always like to do, is to think of, when you think of normal forces, think of them like you are planting a flag <laughs> in your object, okay? Planting a flag, and it's going to stay, it has to stay perpendicular, okay, now to your object, okay? So now, as I start tilting this thing up, all right, how far <coughs> is my flag tilting? Back x degrees. Okay, but the x degrees should be the same as? The tilt. The tilt, Incline. right? How far did I tilt this thing up should also be how far did my flag tilt away from where it was before. From the normal. Okay, yeah, away from the normal. So yes, if I start tilting this up, that's gonna tilt, right? Mm -hmm. And what? That's gonna tilt as well, mm -hmm. right? Or, or, or at least, I guess my x-axis, my gravity can't, I'm sorry, my gravity cannot change direction, right? Mm -hmm. Gravity has to stay pointing straight down. But the y-axis <clears throat> is going to tilt away from the gravity, okay? so. If I have tilted this thing, I don't know, 30 degrees, then look at that. Mm. Mm. That's how far now my x axis or my y axis is going to swing away from, from that. Okay, so now you already know how to find components. So tell me what you would use to find FGX and FGY. Yeah. Sine and cosine. Sine and cosine, but now which is which? Sine would be the FG one, the one on the bottom. I think it's like, um, so I think the sine of like, the sine of the 30 equals um, x, y. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad way to start. Okay, no, you know your true function. All right? Definition of sine has to be Opposite. What's opposite the 30? The x. The hypotenuse, all right? The hypotenuse is now my blue fg. Right? Definition of cosine has to be adjacent. And you get you just stare at the picture, right? You don't have to worry about thinking too hard, it's staring right at us. Okay, so this is again just just stay calm, <laughs> let the picture help you, uh, and and it'll fall right out. Okay, so yes, the y component is now cosine thirty times f g, and the x component is sine thirty times f g. Okay, and we're going to keep doing that the same way uh, every time that we see an incline uh, situation. Oh, yes. Okay, all right, so let's see what he's going to finish up with here uh, regarding this. We could also include friction from the surface if we wanted to be more realistic. Now we have a fairly complex diagram that visually represents many different forces on our object. Now we're going to show a couple of real-world examples and show how we would diagram them. 
Here's a bungee jumper. This is a very dynamic situation. It's important for us to choose a particular time during the jump at which to draw a diagram because the forces will be very different at different times. We can choose any time we like, but we do have to pick just one time. Let's say that we're interested in the time when the jumper is at the bottom of his trajectory. Again, we start with a dot. We don't draw a stick figure, just a single point. And we don't include the rope, even though it is important. We just draw the object in question, the jumper. Gravity is clearly an important force, as is the tension from the bungee cord. To determine the strength of the tension, we must decide what the acceleration of the jumper is. Pause the video to consider this. Okay. Okay, now again, when he's emphasizing make everything a dot, this is kind of where we said in the beginning, you're just gonna draw a little box around the object in question. Okay, so then you're just isolating, isolating that. Okay, but now, deciding how big to draw that tension force, he said, you got to think about where do you think the acceleration is happening? Okay, but now, obviously this thing is in motion, all right? And I don't know, did he specify when we were doing this? Were we doing this at the bottom? At the bottom, yeah. At the bottom, okay, good. That makes a difference. <laughs> okay. All right, so as you were watching that bungee jumper, okay, just visualize, all right, what's happening when you get to the bottom of the motion? There's Anything at the top? Something is stopped, yay, all right? Okay, so now that we can kind of go through, all right, here, I don't know, top, middle of the motion and bottom. Okay, so if you did, just kind of run the little movie through your head, right? Okay, and so you know, yes, the velocity here had to be zero. Yeah, in the y direction. I'm sorry? It would be the y direction. Well, okay, there's only y direction going on here. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about but, but now, if, I, if the velocity is zero, I'm not gonna draw a vector in a direction, right? It is just zero. Okay, but now, while it was getting there though, what was happening? What would you say its velocity was here? In the middle of its motion, if it's gonna head this way. It was the number decreasing, or decreasing. Well, I wanna draw a vector. I wanna draw a vector. What is it, if you had to stop the video right when it was here, but trying to get here? Uh -huh. Yeah, when I draw that, okay, so that, that's its velocity, okay, but if it is shrinking, right, and those even between here and here, that velocity, what, gets shorter and shorter and shorter? So that means, where's my acceleration? Negative. Mm -hmm. uh, you say negative, I guess that's again your choice. Yeah. You want to call up negative, okay, but it's opposite at least, right? In order to slow this thing down, the acceleration has to be in that direction. Okay, so we came up with, or at least uh, Mr. Isaac Newton came up with, okay. uh, we're supposed to be summing forces, right? summing forces that are hopefully going to agree with the acceleration. Okay, all right, so if we are again analyzing right down here, Okay, so we know this acceleration must be in that direction. So yeah, do you think you're gonna draw that tension, force of tension, smaller, equal, or bigger than the gravitational force? Gotta vote for smaller, gotta vote for bigger. If it was bigger, then it would just have smaller. constant acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look what we just drew. I need that to, yeah, and let's, let's go ahead and call that positive, right? Let's go ahead and call that positive. I need a positive acceleration. So if this needs to be a positive number, uh, this is just a, a scalar anyway, but if this has to be a positive number, that means this sum has to be a positive number. Yeah, this is great. Uh -huh. And you can make up numbers here if you like, right? You can make up numbers, I don't know. Um, let's say, I'm uh, doing this, like, it's very small. Okay, let's call that two newtons, all right? So if they make it the same size, that's two newtons. Uh, this is one newton, uh, what, three newtons? Okay, so if I'm going to sum the forces, all right, Ft minus Fg, 
has to come out positive. So what has to be true? Tension has to be bigger. Something has to be pulling harder in that direction in order to get you to accelerate. Yeah, because exactly. the object would stay still. If the <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, run through the scenarios. You can say if Ft is smaller than Fg, what would happen? You would force it around. Okay. Yeah, okay, so you would move or you would accelerate, right? Accelerate down. Okay, if Ft is equal to Fg, you said what? You would stay still. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so be careful, right? Uh, hopefully we specify this. If your acceleration is zero, that can mean two different things. You can be at rest, or you can be in constant motion. Constant motion. <clears throat> I don't get it. No? Okay, Th think about uh, what, the, what acceleration equals zero means. In other words, pretend you're in your car. How would you be driving if we did not want you to accelerate? Same speed. Same speed? And also Constant. not turning the steering wheel? Just you don't want a centripetal accelerate either. Yeah. Okay. It's too far away to crash into me. Well, depends on where you are. Right? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, but in other words, don't, don't get so set in stone that acceleration to zero means always at rest. No, it can mean either one. But I, I like the word that you used. Uh, you said this is also true for anything that is in equilibrium. Right? Which again, if you want to say, well, okay, that's a fancy word, but all that really means is not changing. Yeah, you would relax, you would need like a really high uh, height to, to have like a constant acceleration when falling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's got to be the case. Yes? When I go from when I can, when I can, when I can I agree to everything you said today, it's good. Well, um, okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully just kind of stay open right now. In other words, don't feel like, okay, I'm not getting this now, I gotta get it later, all right? Just stay open, we're gonna keep repeating things over and over. Uh, but again, when in Blackboard, I still have posted videos, all right? Kind of class videos that I would have done in class uh, that I made several semesters ago. So you can take advantage of re-watching, doing the reruns, I guess, uh, for, for some of this. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Chapter four, can I do something? Um, oh, chapter works. five, yes. Chapter five highlights, and then I've got the chapter five uh, practice video or example videos. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, but yeah, just stay open right now, and hopefully you can uh, gain gain some understanding here. Uh, we need the ST for Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. One more. If FT is greater than FG, okay, that's hopefully now that we proved acceleration is upward. Okay, according to whatever I'm defining as positive, if, uh, if positive is upward, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, all right, okay, so in other words, if you kind of, when you're looking at these, I'm hopefully trying to comfort you that you don't have to look at a problem and immediately know the answer, right? You've got these little mental processes that you can go through to kind of feel it out, all right? Uh, and then hopefully it'll just kind of be staring at us and we won't have to, to work very hard. Okay, so we followed his instructions. We paused it long enough. At the bottom of the arc, the jumper must be accelerating upwards so as to bounce up. Therefore, we make sure to draw tension as being stronger than the force of gravity. Looking at the diagram at different points during the fall would give us different amounts of force. Even though we might like to represent that, it doesn't belong on our diagram. Free body diagrams are drawn at a single point in time. This next example involves a dog sled. Let's draw a diagram of the sled as the dogs pull it across the snow at constant velocity. Okay, okay I'm gonna let you try it first. So, Something, 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 something. Oh, 
dot power. Okay. But now, first of all, you got to decide what's this dot represent. The person. The person. What are we focusing on? The sled. The sled. The, sled. the person and the sled because they're both. But but no, I can only do one dot it for one thing. But I mean, look at look at his sentence here. You're drawing a diagram of the sled. Snow on a new plan, or is it just going? Uh, it looks flat. Looks flat to me. Forces look like there's no acceleration. Yeah, it does look like because it looks like everybody immediately got three forces drawn. There's no um, there's gravity in the normal. There's no change. Did you press the friction in the left? Normal is always moving, but it's not accelerating. Sure. So it's just yeah, the natural force and the Oh, yeah, we'll get there. But I know the inversion exists, I can draw it. Relative. Well, well I mean, we're just getting started. Give yourself a chance. Okay. Okay. Try to see if this reminds you of lab three that you just did. Okay, the last lab that you did. Uh, this is also meaning what? Forces are balanced. So if that's the case, my drawing should look like forces are balanced. Okay, because if force is bigger in one direction than another, we found out from the bungee jumper that you're going to accelerate. So in this example, we don't consider friction. Well, we have to decide if uh, if there is a force balancing the dogs, what must it be? I mean, again, we don't see anything what behind the system. It's t and I and I know there doesn't appear in the photograph to be a huge wind. Coming along. Okay. The person is trying to do the Aha. Well, now, okay, now, you, now you're doing Newton's third law, right? Mm -hmm. If the dogs are pulling the sled, the, the sled, sled is pulling the dogs. Yes. All right. But then that would be a separate free body diagram for the dog. Okay. So I'm only focused on the sled. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see if you can hear yours. Did I break it? Okay, I think we can read it though. So that looks as, about as balanced as you can get, right? It's as balanced as you can get it. This is like an equal and opposite force. Okay. Well, be careful there. Equal, uh, we're going to reserve equal and opposite forces for Newton's third law. And that means that they're acting on two different things, the action-reaction. There's no friction. I thought velocity was constant. Velocity is constant here. That's why I was asking if we had friction because you would have to add. You, you have to, right? You have to. As soon as it says constant velocity, there has to be a force, and that's what he suggested. There has to be a force that's balancing the pull of the dogs. Okay. Okay, now, as soon as you looked at this first, you said, well, it's in the snow, and there should be no friction on snow. But think, think about this, that scenario. If there were absolutely no friction, would this even work? No. They would, yeah, they would yeah. I mean, think think right. of what allows you to walk on the floor. I hope this isn't slick. <laughs> All right. And now, then, if you yeah, think about uh, this. I don't know if you've ever lost sleep over things like this. All right. Okay, but if this uh, eraser represents my foot and my hand is the floor. All right. Think about how you honestly walk. What you yeah. push with your foot backward. All right, so notice my foot is trying to push backward. And obviously if there was no friction, I would slip right off. So what's the direction of friction in this case? Right at the instant that I'm pushing on the floor. Well, we could just say right at that instant, right at the instant of contact. Oh, it's horizontal. Ah. If there's friction there, I hope it kind of keeps my foot in place so that I can push off the floor. Beautiful. So friction is actually propelling us. It'd be funny if it went backwards, if you were funny, you'd just be like walking backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here, here's a good clue. If I set that down, does friction move that thing? Doesn't appear to. And it, first of all, is there friction there? How do I know? I only know if I have the, to come along and try to move it, okay? So yeah, so yeah, we never see friction dragging things around backward. No, that, that, we, that just doesn't happen, okay? But yeah, if I really kind of stop and think about what makes me walk, friction is actually propelling me forward, okay? All right, let's see what else it does here. It says, yeah, why don't you draw that in, you're done. Ah. Okay, so now we're gonna have a golf ball. And oh yeah, let me let me make sure this goes slow enough. Uh, okay. Okay, now we want to analyze the ball just after it loses contact with the ground after it loses contact with the ground. So yeah, give that one a try. Going in which direction? Well, I mean, use the picture. And I know nothing about golf. I don't know what kind of club they're using or anything like that. That shouldn't matter. 
Well, we're going to do lots of examples. Because this movie is so slow. Yes, sir. What do you think? Anybody do fall? It's going up. It's going up. It, there's no way it's going to stay on the ground because what is it in the picture that tells it's you? An that? Angled club. The club is angled. Yeah. Yeah. It says so it is kind of lifting the ball. Yeah. So it's, it's going to turn it into a projectile. Sorry. Well, yeah. Incline. Uh -huh. Well, oh, no. This this thing is not this. There is no surface that's an incline here. Okay. Okay. But again, you're going to draw the ball as a dot, mm -hmm. and just after it loses contact with the ground. Okay. Okay. Well, if you can try to draw the forces first. And then we'll put in the x, y axes. Then we'll try to think about components. So don't jump too far ahead and get yourself confused. So he decided that the photograph maybe was not shot at the best location to take a look at it. So he's trying to picture the club and the ball to begin with. But we're still going to do a free body diagram with the point representing the ball. Okay. Now, what's the automatic force you automatically drew first thing? Gravity. Yay. Okay. Yeah. As long as they tell you you were still on Earth. All right, we're always going to hopefully have that one there. Okay, hold it there. All right, now, again, we were wanting to analyze this right after it loses contact with the ground, but it didn't say it was losing contact with the club. Okay. So the angle between the, the angle and the club is gotta be the same angle as the Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because again, if, if the club were flat, right, the force would be pushed flat. But now, if the club is tilted, right, or angled in some way, yeah, think, think of uh, hopefully what that force of the club is nothing more than the normal force again. Right? So in other words, if here's my, if here's the face of the club, as soon as I tilt the club, yeah, look how far that went. Okay, so yes, that angle theta should match that angle theta. Um, is it possible to write the, to express the force of the club with a y direction and an x direction? That depends on where you're going to put your x, y axis. Like, I mean, like two forces, one putting the ball in the x well, Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, let's see how far it goes here. Okay, and yeah, so he's just emphasizing that uh, that the force of the club needs to be a fairly big force. Okay. All right. And again, as long as you do that, you need to make sure the vertical part of the club's force is stronger, stronger than the gravitational. All right, so yes, basically they are breaking the force of the club into components, okay? But now, here's your question. All 
right? What if I had decided to make, what if I decided to tilt my x, y axis? Right? This is totally our choice here, right? Okay, so we knew what? Fg would go that way, and then the force of the club would go that way. So sure, that removed the components of the force of the club, but now I've got components of gravity. Okay. So it's it's a choice. Right? It's a choice of what, what you'd like to do there. Alright, so they chose to kind of keep the x-y axis uh, this direction. Okay. Which should work. And he says, as long as, again, it's not no longer touching the ground, right, then these should be the only two forces we're drawing. If it's not touching the ground, we have a normal force. That, yeah, that is what, what he just said. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I know that the audio, I don't know why I quit. All right. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go through some examples where mistakes have been made. Okay, and here's the guidelines again. Okay, so the diagrams that are going to come up have issues with them. Okay. So if you're watching this on your own, pause the video when a new example appears. You can to figure out what's wrong. Yes? Do you have this gone over in your um, concept video? Like have this ba yeah, basically I will. I will do go through examples and so forth. Like, like the error questions? Mm -hmm. okay. right, but just practice these for now. Okay, but it says, here's a diagram with a problem. <laughs> All right, it says uh, there's supposedly a baseball being thrown, which I know that photograph's terrible. All right, but it is a situation, okay, trying to show the forces on the ball, and I'm going to guess that the ball is already in the air, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Did I miss something there? Okay. Oh, there's, there's the picture. Okay, that's better. So the ball looks like it's in the air, and you want to draw forces on the ball. Well, and now that they, I like the photograph now that we can see it, is that it's a frozen snapshot. So it's only at this instant. What do you think is happening to the ball? It's accelerating forward. Well, that's, that's the good question. Is it accelerating at this point? And if so, in what direction? Forward because you have the magnitude of the throw is greater than that. Okay, but now the person has already thrown it. The person has already thrown it. It would be decelerating because of air resistance. Okay, okay, so there can be some air resistance on it. All right, but now, as far as, uh, I know the letters hide this thing. Okay, but everybody agrees gravity should be there. Okay, all right. But yeah, we think air, yeah, think air is happening, that kind of thing. But now, they're still saying there's a problem with this drawing. So what do you think the problem is? Sorry? Should have an angle. Based on what? And, and what, what force would you put at an angle? Like the, the Sorry? The F throw. The air resistance would have to be larger than the F throw, right? Because it's decelerating. Well, if we know that, do we think, uh, do we think it's slowing down? Okay. okay, but that's a good observation. 
So these are the questions we should ask ourselves. We're wanting to look at this ball after it's thrown. Okay. It says the throwing force is also included. It says the diagram is intended to be drawn after the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. That force has already done its job. There's no need to include it. And then, in other words, the Newton's first law says an object in motion is going to stay in motion until it's acted on by other forces, okay? So it doesn't need, and there, there is no other push while it's in the air, okay? Now, if you were analyzing the ball back at the pitcher's hand, that's different, okay? But we're analyzing it now that it's already left the pitcher's hand, okay? So now if we remove that throw force, Acceleration. now the diagram is correct. Okay. What's the problem that, um, okay. So as soon as we remove that throw force, because we're analyzing it at this time, then that's all we need. Okay, but now, this agrees with your observation. You thought the air resistance had to be bigger than the throw force, because if there is air resistance, sure, it slows things down. And now, as long as the F throw is zero, then yes, the air resistance is bigger than that. Okay, okay let's see who's got next. Okay, now we already kind of looked at this one before, uh, but they're saying there's really a problem with this drawing now. It looks a little lot messy than it did before this. Yeah, that's a good observation. A good observation. So how could we clean it up? I just took a step to see what it is. Friction. There's not those two, and those both the gravity components. Yeah. And also the gravity back. Aha. Aha. Okay. So how it looked neater before, right, is we either just drew the gravity and did not draw the separate components, or if we can draw the separate components. Yeah. So in other words, and I think that's what it'll say. Okay, so they're showing the coordinate system x and y directions. There are several forces at work. Pushing hand, normal force, friction, and gravity. However, there seems to be three gravitational forces at work. One pulling straight down, one pulling against the normal force, and one pulling down the slope. So it seems as if it's been decomposed into its components, which we expected, and then it's also left on the diagram. It says once you really, they, they recommend that once you really break it into components, remove the original force. But I don't expect you to be erasing this on your paper. So personally, I don't mind. I don't mind doing it this way. And if you do it in separate colors, maybe that helps you to, to realize it. So I'm really not that picky about you know, removing that once you've broken it into components. Okay. Because because it, it's nice to still see the hypotenuse to me. All right. Um, so that one that one's not too critical. What do you think is wrong here? With a car driving on the highway, and we've got to imagine the forces on the car. That car looks like it has three wheels. Yes, yeah, it does. A tricycle. The velocity. Well, it's not like it's not force. Aha, yay. Free body diagram should only be about forces. So that velocity vector should not be there. Yeah, what else? Shouldn't there be a normal force? I hope so. Otherwise, this thing would be crashing through the ground. Okay. Right? But again, what, what I like to do, even though they say don't put that on as a force, but you know, if we're, you go back to something like this, I don't mind putting a little arrow on the 
near the diagram, but it's not necessarily a force. And if I make the arrow look a little different, make it a fatter arrow or something, that's just an indication that I know which way acceleration is happening. Uh, so, so that's okay, but, but you're right. That should not be there. So this one has a couple of flaws, a couple of problems. Force moving the car forward, and then something that represents velocity, but says it's sure it's useful, but that should not be included as a force. Okay, so good. See how fast you did that? Okay. Because, yeah, as soon as you look at this, uh, you, you, the first thing you have to ask is, okay, is this a balanced situation? Okay, all right, now, are you okay with the force moving the car, whatever that's a motor, I guess, are you okay with that being bigger than friction? Yes. Because you would now expect the car to accelerate that way? Okay, but then the next question is, should I be accelerating in the Y direction? Take the counter right forever. Well, but should I be accelerating no. in the y direction? No, I mean, not, not unless, again, you're falling through the ground or somehow you're levitating and, and going upward. Okay, so yes, you need a force to balance out gravity. So you need some kind of a normal force. Okay, all right, so you get the idea? Get the idea? And again, with practice, okay, and I'll let you kind of watch the rest of this, uh, this on your own if you like. Right. Okay, and then there's another one here that does some more inclines and such. Okay, but now let's see if I can open this. Uh, what I like to call a decision tree. Hopefully this will open. A decision tree for Newton's second law, if you will. Hmm. If you click on the A arrow, yes, you can download it as a Okay, okay. Well, I won't mess with it now because I'll make it mad, probably. Okay, but really what it's going to hopefully boil down to here when it ever loads is you really only have kind of two choices, don't you? Right. You're either accelerating or you're not. Okay, or you're not. Yeah, you're not accelerating or you are accelerating. Okay, so, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Try your approach here. So on the page, put the A down arrow. <laughs> now I've lost it. There we go. Oh. There we go. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think they just have to scroll down. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I think it's a useful document. <laughs> I hope it's a useful document. Yay! All right. <coughs> First thing you have to do is decide what body you're interested in. All right, decide what body you're interested in. Isolate it and draw the free body diagram for that. Okay, and then yes, this is where you can easily, um, yeah, easily look at the components. So again, if I can make this big enough to see, there we go. All right, so even on here. Uh, which now this is a little awkward. I'm not quite sure why that dot is there and the x axis is here. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> All right. Okay. But anyway, but if a car is kind of sitting on a slope, yep, that's what I want. All right. And now here, if you want to compare that to the traffic light, uh, can you notice that there are two free body diagrams, really? Well, or here you can say, okay, I'm the traffic light, so I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to pretend I'm the traffic light hanging there, right? I'm going to say, okay, what forces must I be feeling? 
gravity. must be feeling gravity, but something's pulling out of the top of me. Right? Something's holding me up. Okay, so we're going to call that T tree. Now, what is this diagram? Okay, that's now a different body, if you will, but that's going to say now I'm going to go to the connection, and I'm going to be that connection in the drawing. So now I say, okay, I'm the knot or whatever it is that the, all the cables are attached to each other. And I say, okay, if I'm at that location, what must I feel? Oh, oh no, well, be careful. No, no. Just the top plate and then the yeah, course. something's tugging me this way. And now, if, if you wanted to say these cables had a lot of mass to them, then you probably would include gravity. But for now, we're hopefully going to suggest that the traffic light is much, much more massive than the cables themselves. Yeah. So I don't have to include gravity for the, the cables themselves. All right, but now. Take a look here. Hmm. In this drawing, T3 goes up. In this drawing, T3 goes down. How do you classify that? It looks like there's like a, something in the two forces loading each other, like um, the force is the attraction force. Ah. So the core, T3 core and the. Okay. But now, first of all, T3 should be the same size. Yeah, not. Did they draw them the same size? Hopefully. But they're equal and opposite in direction. So yes, this is now an action-reaction pair. Right? This is an action-reaction pair. But they're two separate bodies, and that's what free bo or that's what uh, Newton's third law says. They have to act on separate bodies. So I could say, okay, this one going up, the cable is pulling on the light. How would I state this one? The light, the light is pulling on the cable. It's as if you were measuring the middle of that mm -hmm. small cable. Like Correct. That yeah. Okay. So in other words, I will never draw an action-reaction pair on the same free body diagram. Yeah. Action-reactions have to act on two separate bodies. Okay. Two separate bodies. <coughs> okay. And we're going to get a lot of practice with these uh, free body diagrams. All right. Okay. Now have fun with this circular one. Is it circular? Have fun with that circular one. Okay. Uh, anything you disagree with there for the free body diagrams? It's a, yeah. It's one ball moving around. So they're drawing. Three different free body diagrams for different locations. The balls are different distances. It's like the Ferris wheel court. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does that have a red vector of velocity? Yes, it does. Okay. Which, which again, that's what the previous guy recommended. Don't put that on the diagram. But again, he did it in a different color. Don't put one of the diagrams. Well, no, he's suggesting that the velocity vectors are not forces, and I agree. Okay, those are not forces, all right? But I've drawn them in a different color, so it's at least identifying what the movement is uh, at this point. Okay? All right, but now, take a look up here. If these are the only two forces, and it looks like this has to be somebody that's attached to a string, Okay, so this tension here is coming from the string, All right? But now, does that look like a balanced free body diagram? Both forces are going down. So what direction is your acceleration? Towards the center. Downward toward the center, and how would you label that acceleration? Okay, that matches. That matches. Okay, uh, let's go to the bottom. All right, you're at the bottom of the swing. Okay, notice uh, MG has to stay down toward the center of the Earth, so that makes sense. Uh, but let's see, what do you think? Are these balanced?
12 centimeters in length. This one is barely 10, 10 and a half. Uh -huh. Okay, so at first glance, yeah, they may kind of look like they're drawn the same, but no. This one's going to be bigger than that one. So which way must you be accelerating? How about at this location? Hopefully, yeah. All right. So hopefully, what? That T is bigger than that. So there must be, must be that. But now, what about that guy? But aren't those the components? So you should. They are. Check. They are the components. Shouldn't you check the legs? Those not be. There is only one X component here. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> Due to that guy. Yep. Okay, so that's where when I, when I play with Newton's second law, I'm always very conscious of these vectors. Okay, didn't mean to make it that sloppy. All right that I'm going to be looking for forces that combine in the direction of whatever acceleration I may have. Okay. All right, but now, the rest of this document, though, we're enough practice with the free body diagram, okay? Okay, it's suggesting, all right, that next question you're gonna automatically ask, is the object accelerating, okay? If yes, right, label the direction of A on the sketch, make that direction positive. Right, so if you're going to be accelerating in a certain direction, go ahead and make that positive, okay, because that's the direction you're going. And then this is what I like to do. Circle only those forces or components that match the direction of A. And they can go with the acceleration. You can make that positive, or you can have components that go against the acceleration. So you can make those minus, and then we will sum those up. Okay. So if I circle those components, match those, and then set up separate if you have three dimensions, uh, and then the rest is algebra. Right. So once you go through these steps, you're doing the physics. Okay, now, if it is not accelerating, okay, so hopefully traffic lights don't accelerate. Hopefully they stay put, all right? Then you can immediately just uh, look at your diagram and set up, all right? Set up some statements here, and let's go ahead and practice that. Uh, okay, so let's look at this diagram B. All right, how would you set up Newton's second law statement there. For the vertical one? Yeah, for this for this diagram right here. T3 plus F3. T3 plus minus. minus. I mean, it would be a sign that you it would be. True, true. But if I am making up positive and down negative, it would yeah. look like that. And that equals a big old zero. Guess what? Do the algebra. And that tells us. Okay. Now, do it for picture C. We're still not expecting any acceleration. Can I do it in component? Can I do it in just one direction at a time? What do you see going on in the x direction? Yeah, 
are we going to do that for them? Okay, and I can divide both sides by three if I like, so that I can get one in terms of the other. Okay, and again, it's just algebra. Okay, so that's in the x direction. All right, now what's happening in the y direction? We need two sides. We sine. Minus two on the sine. Plus. Minus one. That's good. Minus two. Everybody diagrams, as long as we can nail those, then writing the statements hopefully will come, come pretty natural. All right. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's see. Is that all I got on here? Uh, solve for the unknown variables, and yes, pay attention to your units. Okay. We don't want to lose, lose that. Okay. All right. So now let's see if I can find some examples for us. Let's see if I can go with two like this. I'm still good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Get out of that. Um, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. No, I needed the full book. Sorry. I need the full book. Uh, kind of taking a look at the chapter review here <clears throat> all right okay then hopefully what the chapter review does for you <clears throat> is it does say okay these are the important things all right <clears throat> so if you get nothing else out of the chapter make sure that these things make sense to you right. okay so it goes through all the laws again all right uh, but now here's my favorite drawing my favorite little drawing <clears throat> okay the isolated body look at its mass all right then, if we do have a net force, I expect the acceleration and the net force to be in the same direction. That's what Newton's second law tells us. Okay, So that's why I like to ask the question first, am I accelerating? And if so, in what way? Right? And as soon as I know that, then I'm going to start looking for any forces that go along uh, in that direction. Okay, And it says yes. And obviously, if you are not accelerating, <clears throat> then you hopefully expect uh, any net force to look out. Right? That's kind of the goal, the goal for that. Okay, but yeah, this just takes practice, <clears throat> excuse me, in a lot of different scenarios here. Uh, so let's see what we can find. We do have some with pictures, some without, and I don't want to steal all the ones, <clears throat> all the ones that you're going to have. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Let's do the densest question. Let's see, 121. Okay, let's type this in. All right. Let's see if this will match up. Okay. Um, all right, I really would like. Okay, yeah. Let me go to. I want to go to number 17. Seventeen. We can read that. We want a block sliding down a frictionless plane having an inclination of fifteen degrees. The block starts from rest at the top, and the length of the incline is two meters.
Now, they're helping you here. They're saying part A, draw the free body diagram. Hopefully after a while, we won't have to tell you that. You're gonna do that automatically. All right, but that is the first thing we want you to do. Draw the free body diagram. free body diagram when the object is at that reverse point or hmm. well let's see if you want to kind of read ahead eventually they are going to want us to figure out the acceleration and the speed when it reaches the bottom so you might do it somewhere while it's on its way down for direction of inclines. And did you draw a note? This one didn't give us a picture, but you can certainly start with a picture. So do you like your inclines going up to the right? Okay. You can draw them going up to the left as well. It shouldn't matter. Okay. Okay, so you can put it on here somewhere. All right, but this is where we said, okay, it's on an incline. So my free body diagram, it will be helpful to tilt your axes. And you should ask yourself, how many forces should there be and what are they? Gravity, obviously. Okay, gravity. <laughs> and, and even if you do start on your sketch here, that's fine. All right, but when I translate it uh, to the free body diagram, right, should go in the same direction. And now, where should it be with respect to? Ah. Whatever part of that has swung off the y direction axis should match the angle of the incline. Okay. Normal the force. force. I'm sorry? The normal force. Normal force. Where does that go? Uh, on the upwards y. Uh huh. Okay. But it, again, it's what? Always perpendicular to the surface? Right. Good. So, Good. That, that angle. so definitely here. There's no friction. So. There's no friction. So is it the same for you if we represent the y, uh, the y vector name with two components, one in the, one in the, well, sorry, the, the x1, I'm sorry. Well, okay, but for, first of all, our, we're, we're gonna decide, are these the only forces I need <laughs> for this situation? All right, but now, are you asking, what if I didn't tilt the axis? Yeah, you see. Ah, okay. Let's take a look at that. All right, if I let the plain old x, y axis looks like this, then I would definitely draw f, g just along the y axis. But then I'm gonna have to tilt this. Now, 
let's see why is this an advantage of one diagram over the other. All right. So now, if we all agree those are the only forces we can draw, because there's no friction, all right. nobody else is pushing or anything like that. Next question to ask is, is this accelerating? Well, hint, hint, right? <laughs> Right. But again, if you're sitting on a frictionless surface, there's nothing to slow down. Yeah, isn't it going to speed up? Okay, so which way? Down. Okay. So I like to put that on my little sketch here. <clears throat> and now, can I come down to my free body diagrams, one or the other, okay, and say, sure, that goes that way, or, uh, I'm going to have to go this way. Which drawing is going to be easier to find components that match that red arrow? The first one. See, so th this one's going to say that, yeah, you've got acceleration off in some quadrant, but you know. So, so th this would make it much more complicated. Okay, so now hopefully here, is it easy to find components? Now, which components match the direction of A? So I like to circle that one. That's the only one that matches the direction of my acceleration. Okay, so that's step one, step two, step three. Now we get to sum up any forces that match the direction of A. back a little bit. Um, do, did we go through the discussion of where FG comes from? Where does FG come from? Gravity. It does come from gravity. So notice that's a specific acceleration. Mm -hmm. So did we say that it's nothing more than mass times your 9.8? Okay, so everybody's okay with that? Alright, so what if we replace possible to find the answer to part B now? Yes. Okay. okay, so it's only a component of gravity that is getting this thing down. Okay, let's see what they've drawn there. Uh, okay, all right. All right, so they decided not to tilt the axis, which again is going to make their. Yeah, that, that's not my favorite free body diagram. <laughs> right, because again, it makes the math so much easier. Because right, I don't want to find components of the normal, I don't want to find components of uh, the acceleration, uh, and that sort of thing. Right, but, but even still, right, even if we do look at theirs, we know the acceleration must be this direction. So, so yeah, this is better, right? That's better to tilt the axis. All right. Ah, they called it negative. That's just their choice, right? 
choice. But I guess if you wanted to say this is a oh. this is a negative x direction, that's okay. Yeah, that's oh. okay. This is like oh, it's kind of seventy minus one eighty, I guess. I'm just looking at where the negative comes from. Okay. I'm sorry. I think it's like two hundred seventy minus fifteen, and then you get the ah. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's if you're going to use a universal angle all the way around, yes. Uh, two seventy minus fifteen is what? Two fifty five. Okay, yeah. If you use sine two fifty five instead, yeah, your calculator will automatically spit out the, the negative. Okay, but I'm perfectly happy. If you got a picture that looks like that and you put this value in there, there is no misunderstanding. That is the acceleration, and that's the direction it's going. Okay, now here's a little review. Can you determine the speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline? And let's see, let me scoot back up. I think they gave us some other information that I did not write down. The block starts from rest at the top and the length of the incline is two meters. So yeah, in other words, they're giving us, uh, what? And now it's a matter of, okay, if I am saying to the left is negative, I gotta make sure those match. Okay, all right, so yeah. I mean, I can find time probably if I like. So if you find time, then find the speed. That's two equations. Otherwise, we can do hopefully one equation here. And you say, well, why didn't they call it negative? They could have. Right? They could have. Right? But obviously, you, your calculator is not going to spit out a negative. Um, so again, we just say what's the... And, well, I guess here's how they get by with that. They did not ask for velocity. They just asked for speed. Yeah. They just asked for speed. Okay. All right. So this is the pattern we would like for you to follow. All right. In other words, if you kind of follow a recipe, then hopefully the problems will almost solve themselves, is the way I like to think of it. So, okay, now I'm going to post this document. I, I don't think I've got it up there yet because I couldn't get it loaded. All right, I'm going to post this uh, in your course resources. On Blackboard. But this is a way to at least organize your solutions. Okay? So you can download this and use it as many times as you want. And I'll try to get a, a whole bunch of duplicated so we can have them here in class uh, to use all the time as well. Okay? But we're just trying to say, okay, step one, here's what you do. Step two, here's what you do. Step three, here's what you do. Okay, so let me find you another example to see if we can apply that. Is this like a template you can like it, it is a template, yep. Well, this really helps. Good, good, good. All right, let's try. Okay, yeah, and I want to stay without friction for now. Okay, yeah, so let me go to... Okay, let's get big here. Okay, 
All right, let's read the description. I'm going to look at question 22 in the back of the chapter. All right. But some object of mass 1, 5 kilograms, is going to be placed on a frictionless horizontal table, and it'll be connected to a string that passes over a pulley that's fastened to a hanging object of mass 2, 9 kilograms, as shown in a figure. Hopefully this will pop up. There we go. They are drawing a picture. They've already given us a picture for it. Okay, so mass one is five kilograms. And then the hanging object is nine kilograms. Okay, so that's the picture to start with. First thing I want us to do, draw free body diagrams on both of the objects. So since there are two bodies, I'm going to need two free body diagrams. And this is hopefully what it says. From the sketch, choose a body as the free body. If necessary, choose more than one. So in this scenario, we do have more than one. No angles here, right? So I should just be able to do two nice little XY axes. by the time we get to the exam, you won't need it. You're going to do this routine over and over and over again that you'll just do these steps automatically. Yeah, this is just to get us started. Okay. So you have your little free body experience. Okay. Your mass one sitting on the table. What forces must you be feeling? Gravity and normal. Okay. Normal and gravity. All right, F G one. Okay. N. Okay. The force of M two. That's all right. M two. Will I call it M two? In other words, I'm just this inanimate block. What am I feeling? Like a force to the right. It's a force to the right, but the thing, it's a string, right? Tension. It's only a string. So the only thing I really should call it is T. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have no idea where that T is coming from, really. Okay. Just an inanimate block. Let's see there. Would F? T be the same thing? FT is fine, okay. yeah. I mean, I'm 
if you just don't, don't want too many letters. <laughs> uh, honestly, I even get to the point where I don't bother just writing FG1 and others. I go ahead and translate that to MG1. That saves us from writing too many different variables. Okay, now, did I draw it fairly well? In other words, do you think this thing is looking balanced where it should? Got a little carried away, but yeah. Uh, you, I don't think it, the block on the table is going to be accelerating vertically. Okay. Acceleration. But it right. will be accelerating horizontally. Okay, so I can put that. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you're the hanging guy. You're the hanging guy. Who wants to be right? Only right. gravity. Gravity. And a string. T. Okay, but now, if I do translate those here, no, however long I drew the for the five kilogram, what, this one should be bigger? Because if it represents nine kilograms, I should kind of make it look that way. Okay, but now, how big should I draw T, do you think? Smaller. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's better. Yes, thank you. Okay, but yeah, how big should I, do you think I should draw a T? Small. Small? Small compared to this? Small compared to Because if you're this one, are you accelerating? Down. You're accelerating down. Okay. So yeah, I should make this look unbalanced. So many little extent in my direction. Okay. So how's that? acceleration and sum them. Tensions, you know. Meaning what? Okay, so if you're block one, oh, what should I write? Well, I mean, I've got, I got three labeled forces here. Which ones do I need? T, one, two, three. Ah. I don't understand. Well, you know, okay. You're okay with the drawing? Three by diagram? Okay. As soon as I identify the direction of acceleration, Newton's second law says I can only use forces that match that direction. Mine. So, yeah, that's all I can write. Alright, and now here, okay, we know acceleration is down, so that means definitely that guy's involved. M2G versus MT. And what about that one? So what am I gonna write? T plus F G. Okay, alright, but if I do that. Are they going in the same direction? No. T should be negative. Ah. And that's, and that's usually what I like to do as well. And if I'm going to say forward, right, is a positive direction, then t these must go in an opposite direction. Mm -hmm. okay. But now, notice I didn't call this a T1 and a T2. Okay, that'll be okay for now. <laughs> Because they didn't sell us any details about the pulley. All right, most of the time it's a massless, frictionless pulley. Totally fiction. That would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In, in a cartoon world, 
friction does not play a role here. Okay, but that's not going to be in the real life. But for now, if we ignore the pulley, then yes, we can say the tensions are the same. But we'll get later in another chapter where we'll talk about tensions being different on each side of the pulley. Okay, but for now, we're fine here. So that T and that T are going to be the same. All right, so now if uh, they're wanting us to find, we're going to say our two unknowns are the acceleration and the tension. Yes? Was it 9.81 degrees as a negative third? Well, look what I did. In other words, I decided to call the forward motion, I decided to call that positive. Well, it is a decision we have to make, all right? But, uh, but no, I am not going to call gravity negative here. Because, because if I do, then I'm going to have to call the forward motion of this system negative. All right? And then that would have to be interface. You just have to show that they're opposite. Okay, but now I think we're down to algebra, aren't we? So we so like M M two B is actually like positive times A one times the ninety N kilograms. Yes. Yeah, mass two. Okay, and now as soon as I kind of put in some numbers, I think it's obvious what the unknowns are: the tension and the acceleration. So what? And F G one is negative. Yeah, well, that would be, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine here. Because now, you're right, I didn't even bother with these two at all, did I? They do not contribute to the acceleration at all. So what is making the G2 negative? Uh, oh, I know, I made FG2 net positive. What is making that positive? I decided that forward, forward motion, is positive. Yeah, because the object is, is accelerating downward. It's not decelerating. Yeah, and again, if you were to run a movie through your head here and you say, okay, we're going to release this thing, the whole system is going to move together, right? The string connects them, so they are going to move as one. All right, so what am I down to here? Uh, okay, A falls right out, right? High number, but you're on a frictionless surface. Not surprising. Okay, and now the next thing I want you to find, I want you to find the tension. So, but yeah, basically what we were able to set up here are two equations, two unknowns. accelerating in that direction. Okay. Feel good? Okay, got a plan? Okay. So absolutely. Definitely need practice. Yes. The reason why you consider that T R equals is because you're concerned that it's kind of moving at the same it's, it's they're moving together. together. Yep. And again this is mainly because we're ignoring the pulley. If we if we have friction this one would be slower or well 
Now, I wouldn't say slower. In other words, when we, if we were going to have a real pulley that has friction and everything and mass to it, then the thing, the whole system will still move as a unit, but it will make the pulley turn. And then we're going to need a bigger tension on one side than the other to make the pulley turn. Yeah, so we'll get there. Okay. I'm sorry. I was just going to go. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to check that. For the current assignment? Oh, okay, okay. Let me check it then. Okay, I'll see what it's I need to challenge myself in the case. I'm sorry? Well, I mean, this, again, just take your time, all right? And again, just let these things kind of guide you along. And then hopefully you'll just see the patterns and it'll be easier. Yeah. So give yourself a chance. But, but the, the, hard, the challenge is going to be that I've got these simple rules, but I've got to find them so many different scenarios. Yeah. But it'll come. It'll come. Uh, sure, sure, yeah. So you can practice that a little bit so you feel more comfortable with it. Okay. Well, and now, now you've got a chance to actually go back and try to rework those test questions. Or create new ones. True, true. Yeah, but just do a little at a time. Don't, don't go overwhelm yourself. Yes. Mathematics brain <laughs> bothers me about this because oh, if the horizontal throw is zero, they're the same. Well, but again, it's not. You, you got to throw something horizontally, so you can't throw it at zero. I know, I know. Okay, but now I guess here's here was our goal of why we thought this was the better answer. No, I understand why. I calculated it on the back. Oh yeah, you did. Like if the horizontal throw is the same. It's the same as what? Like, if the horizontal velocity is zero. Okay, but where will it be zero? Yeah. If velocity initial of the x is zero here. Because I calculate this one over it, but this one is just 